And I think we are all here tonight for the same reason, and that is we want to learn more, as much as we can, about the situation facing many of our communities, especially Salinas in this particular wonderful book that we're profiling tonight. And we want to come together to find solutions, to talk, and um, move forward to ensure that no future violence or, um, or any kind of hardship faces any of our children. So I welcome you tonight to have that conversation with a wonderful group of panelists who took their time to come up here and to um, have this important conversation for our community. Uh, this is going to hopefully be a very civil um, conversation, and we know that this issue obviously um, has a lot of feeling attached to it, and there's a lot going on in all across the United States around this issue. And tonight, what we are hoping for is that we are civil to each other, that we listen to each other, and that we learn together. Um, I really appreciate everyone coming here for a multitude of reasons. Um, one, supporting an incredible independent bookstore. I love bookshop. One of the great bookstores still standing. Um, I also, I'm a journalist. I live and might even die for free speech. So I'm very happy that there are many voices here and. Um, I want to hear your concerns. We are here to discuss gang violence, but there is a segue with the issue of police legitimacy in communities of color. And I think we might be able to address some of that in our questions at the end. And we'll also, I'll be talking about it in the reading I'm doing here as well. Um, so I appreciate your open minds and your civility. Really glad to see you. My mother was a longtime activist for peace in Santa Cruz, and I had a feeling if she was alive today, She'd probably be out there with a sign. <laughs> Although me in here, I don't, you know, she probably would have been there anyway. <laughs> so, um, I don't know how many times we got her out of jail because of demonstrating and protesting. So, in my mother's honor, I dedicate this event. <laughs> Now to get to your question of what, about GQ and Lil GQ Mondo. And Lil Mondo. Um, you know, when I first started reporting on this, I didn't want to report on gangs. Uh, I was the editor of El Andal magazine for many years. Some of you might remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, we always went broke. <laughs> but I really had an aversion to the whole idea of the thug. I thought that gangsters were actually like a living Hollywood stereotype. And when a gangster guy would come in all tatted up, you know, wanting us to print his poetry, I'd be like, there's the door, out of here. And it wasn't until 